to Christ who once was dead but now is alive forever and ever, the glory and praise. Amen. This is our greatest day. This is the day of victory, of comfort, reassurance, and praising. This is the day that Christ died but rose from the grave. And that means that this is the day that changes everything. We often say that this changes everything, but what does it actually mean? We'll take an example. Over the last few weeks during our Lenten season, if you had opportunity to worship with us here at St. Paul's, you know that the theme that we used was Jesus' final steps. We looked at some of the final places and events that happened before Jesus died. His final steps took him to a fig tree. His final steps took him to Lazarus' grave. His final steps took him to a banquet, took him to an upper room, and yes, finally, his final steps took him to the cross. But today changes that. In fact, we really should be taking a step back today and to rethink that kind of theme. Jesus' final steps? That's not true. Those weren't his final steps. For he stepped out of the grave and he is alive. And he is forever and ever. And that is what we rejoice over this Easter. And may it ever be. That for Jesus there is no more final. And praise be to God. Those who follow Jesus in faith, there is no final. No final moments, no final steps, no final days. A life everlasting. But that's a hard truth to believe, isn't it? We are born sinful. We're born to die. And while we live here below, Experience tells us that it seems like there is final. We deal with final a lot. Things come to an end. We have a saying even, all good things must come to an end. And it seems to be true. The innocence of childhood ends. The vitality and energy of middle age ends. The usefulness and self-reliance ends. Our relationships end. Grandma and Grandpa leave. Mom and dad leave. Spouse leaves. Children sometimes leave. Our sins cause finalness, it seems. When we break our relationships, we hurt others, and that's it, it seems. That's what the disciples of Jesus were struggling with on that Saturday and part of Sunday, the final I'm sure, as you can understand, they were probably reliving those final moments with Jesus. And as human experience teaches us, with those reliving of final moments, there always comes that great regret and shame. For the disciples of Jesus, it was probably awful when they thought about their final moments with Jesus. They had promised never to leave him. They would die with him rather than run away. And as soon as the first sign of trouble came, away they ran. If only we knew. If only we knew. But now it's too late. The women of Jesus that followed him during his whole ministry, they did better than the disciples. They didn't run away, but they too stood powerless around the cross. They had helped him during his ministry, helped him take care of his bodily needs and his physical things, and yet here they were standing at the cross and they could not take care of anything. They were powerless to help him. And I'm sure that was being relived in their minds. If only we had done this. If only we had done that. Maybe things had gone differently. Final moments. You know what that's like, don't you? With finality of sin and death. It's people who must deal with final after the fact. There's always that regret that what it. If only I knew my loved one would die, I would have said this or done that. I would have held him one last time. The finality 
the seeming finality of our relationships, of our sin. If only I'd known that saying this would hurt my spouse so badly or my children or caused my friends to think little of me. But now it's too late. And then there is that big finality that seems to haunt us and stand before us and oh, we can look away from it for a little while but there is the day approaching in which we know will be our last. And as that gets closer, there is certainly regret. If only I knew life would go so quickly. If only I knew I didn't have a chance to do this or to that, how different it would have been, but it's too late. We would think that we would learn living in a life of finality. But we never do. And this also should teach us the greatest finality that is out there that, that we've come to know and to believe that the finality of sin, that eventually we die and we will be in the finality of hell. That's what we deserve. My dear friends, Easter changes all of that to all of your regret, to all of your shame, to all of your fear, to all of your sadness, to all of that sorrow, Easter is God's answer. Jesus died for sin and he came back to life. He didn't have final moments and he never will have final moments or days or steps. And for those disciples who saw him on that Easter Sunday, what do you think they were thinking of in those moments? How could you describe the sheer wonder and marvel that their loved one was alive again. How could human words possibly capture the emotions that must have been swinging in their hearts? And I'm sure it was too much for them to take in on that day. But over the days and weeks and months and down through the centuries, believers in Jesus have come to know the real truths of what his resurrection means for us. And it is marvelous and glorious. If Jesus died for our sins as punishment for all of our sins, and then he came to life again, what does that mean? It must mean, and it does mean, that every single one of our sins has been paid for, and we are forgiven. As Scripture clearly says, I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins sins no more. If Jesus, true God and true man, died, his body died, it was put into a grave, it was dead, the soul was in heaven, and yet three days later his body was back to life, his soul was back in his body, what does that mean? It must mean and it does mean that though our bodies one day will die, though our bodies will one day be in a grave, Jesus will raise them again just as he promised, because I live, you too shall live. If all of these things were prophesied in Holy Scripture hundreds of years before they happened and they seem too difficult and impossible to be true that the dead could ra be raised and yet Jesus rose from the dead, then it must mean and it does mean that God is able to keep all of his promises, even the most difficult ones. As Scripture clearly states, is anything too difficult for the Lord? But I don't know if all of those catechism truths were sinking in on that first Easter morning. I don't think so. I don't think there was time for that. And, and maybe what we can just spend our last moments with today is what was, must have been sinking in for them. There was no final. They didn't have final failure with Jesus. They didn't have final moments with Jesus, they would get to be with him, to speak to him, to hold him. My dear friends, that is the wonderful truth of Easter. May we always remember this. When the grief and the sorrow and the regret over a loved one who died in the Lord is very real to you, remember Easter. And all of those things that you wanted to say, that last hug that you wanted to give, know this, you will say them again. You will hold them again. There will be no last hugs or holdings or times. When the shame and grief of sin oppress you, 
when you think, is this it? Is God finally going to throw me away? I failed him one last time. He's going to throw me away like the piece of trash that I am. Remember Easter. God will not throw you away. God threw your sins away so he could have you forever. And yes, when you are walking through that valley of the shadow of death, and some of us are, and as you think of that fear of death, and we all have it, remember Easter. Isn't your final days of living? These aren't your final moments. You will live with Christ forever and ever. Is there anything more amazing than this in all of the world? Is there anything that is more comforting than this in all the world? Is there anything in this life that you can hold on to that is important as this? May the Lord Jesus send His Holy Spirit to help us see how great and wonderful this treasure is that we always hold on to that Easter truth and comfort. For Jesus and for His followers, there is no final. For He has arisen, just as He said He would. Amen. May the peace of God, which goes beyond all of our understanding, that peace that there 